So, you want to kill the big snake, but you can't buy your gear on the GE. Ugh, Iron Man. Well, you've come to the right place. Today, I'm going to show you the bare minimum gear that I would kill Zolra in, as well as the bare minimum gear I would farm Zolra in, and everything you need to do up to and in between. Now, of course, the only quest you need to reach Zolra is Regicide, but there are a few more quests we're going to do before we get here. And those are Fremenic Isles for the Helm of Nates not. The Mage Arena 2 mini quest for our imbued God Cape, Recipe for Disaster for Barrow's Gloves, Roving Elves for a Crystal Shield, and finally one small favor for the ability to make Guthix Rest Potions. Now, when I created this loadout and inventory, I tried to go for essentially the lowest level requirements that I could manage while still feeling like I could confidently kill Zora. However, some of the higher level requirement items, like the Barrow's Gloves or an Amulet of Glory, are things that you're going to naturally get in your account's progression anyways, and that you should probably work on getting before you start trying to kill Zora. Now, I've kept it just four switches between weapon, body, leg, and back. We're going to go between Mystics and Black Dragon Hide for those offensive bonuses to make sure we're actually killing the boss in time. However, some of these kills may take upwards of four minutes. Now, we're going to leave on the Helm of Natiz Knot and the Crystal Shield because of their amazing defensive bonuses. We're using the Glory and Barrow's Gloves because of how versatile they are for both mage and range. And we're going to rock a Ring of Recoil to deal with the Snakeling spawns. They only have one HP each so if they take any recoil damage, they will die immediately. Now our inventory is going to have 1-2 to two prayer potions, 1-2 to two anti poisons, an extra ring of recoil, some of our best food, I'm using sharks here but you could make tuna potatoes at a relatively low level, and I like to include some carambons for tickets because you can get bursted down pretty quickly during the mage phase. And I also have runes for Iben's Blast, I have a one click teleport to get out of there, as well as a ring of dueling to get to the clan wars portal to refresh my stats, as well as a couple of Guthix rests. Now, while we're killing Zolra, let's take a look at some of the other things we have to know before we truly get into this. To reach Zolra, you're probably going to want to use the fairy ring code BJS for Big Juicy Snake, but you can also get some teleport scrolls that you can use fairly regularly and that can sustain themselves as long as you're getting 3-4 to four kills per trip. If you don't have the agility level to use the shortcut and don't have any summer pies or agility potions to boost, you can also teleport to a charter ship and then take a charter to Port Tyrus. It's going to be a little bit longer, but it's still a pretty easy way to reach the area. Zora can be one of three colors. Zora always starts out as green, which is ranged. It's weak to magic, and you'll use protection from rage against it. When Zora is red, you won't use any protection prayers. You'll instead just continue to mage it and dodge the melee attacks by standing in these squares that we have marked. And during the blue phase, when she uses magic and range, you'll pray protection from magic, you'll use range, and you'll pray you don't get smacked too hard by the ranged attacks. There's also a jad phase where Zora will swap attacks every single attack. All you do is once you see one attack incoming, you start to pray against the next one, and it's very easy to avoid 100% of damage during that phase. Now, during the mage phase, you will be attacked by the occasional ranged attack, and you also have the snakelings on you that can deal up to 15 damage each, so you may get combat out pretty high. During any of these blue phases, you really need to watch your health and be prepared to combo eat a shark, a karambwan, and potentially even a guthix rest. Now, Zora will swap between these phases on a very set rotation. There are four different rotations, and you won't know which one you've got until you're already in the fight. However, if you use zoraguide.co.uk on the side of your screen, you can plug in the first couple of phases, and it'll automatically update with the full rotation so you can see exactly where you need to run to. And the order that I would recommend is click on the spot that you need to fight that phase from. Then, while you're running, throw up your protection prayers for the next phase as Zora comes up and then finally swap your gear over. Of course it's really important to never take damage that could be avoided with overheads so swap your prayers first if you need to but I do like to run as soon as possible to try and avoid the venom clouds because all venom clouds are 100% avoidable as long as you follow the rotations. Now let me talk about Guthix Rests. I do not see that many Iron Men using them, and that is a tragedy because they are so, so good when you're starting out Zulra before you can make anti-venoms. 
Every single Guthix's rest will heal you 20 cumulative health. It's five health per sip, as well as every sip also reducing your venom down to poison and your poison damage by one. So in this case, I can tick eat it with a shark and a karambuan to heal 43 health in one tick, as well as reduce that venom down to poison, which I can then remove with the super anti-poison, or which I can just continue to manage because six poison damage over the course of the fight isn't going to be that bad. Now, Venom isn't going to deal that much damage to you immediately. It takes a while to stack up, so you don't always need to remove it the instant it comes in. Instead, I try to use a Guthix Rest in combination with a Shark or a Karambuan, or while Zora is changing phases so that I don't lose much DPS. If I know that there's a phase where I'm not going to be attacked by Zora or a Snakeling for a while, that's when I'm going to use the Super Anti-Poison to get rid of the poison altogether. Otherwise, I'm pretty happy to just tank that 6 points of poison damage. So as you can see, the low item requirement to Zora is perfectly possible for an Iron Man. However, it's pretty painful because the kill is going to take a lot of time and it's going to eat up a lot of your resources. So I'd only recommend this for a single kill for your Western Province's Hard Diary, or if you're just feeling real, real lucky. Otherwise, I would wait for some upgrades. There are a few pretty immediate upgrades. You could grind up your crafting for a Fury. You could go get Infinity Boots. But most importantly, you could go to Barrows and get some RMs or Carols. As well as doing hard clues for some Blessed Dragonhide, which is a small little benefit over the Black. Now, of course, the one thing that'll make the biggest difference with actually farming Zora is going to be getting that Trident at 87 Slayer, and that's going to be the absolute center point for our farming Zora build. Now here's what I would actually farm Zora in when I'm going for my Magic Fang and Blowpipe. I've upgraded my Mystics to Arms, my Mystic Boots to Infinity Boots, my Glory to a Fury, and my Black Dragonhide to Blessed Dragonhide. I've made a couple pretty substantial upgrades, but the biggest one of all is Iben Staff out, Trident in. Now I still had my Iben Staff runes in my inventory because I'm not very smart, but it's still uh, going to show you that this is actually a pretty easy kill with a DPS from a Trident. You can make changes as you see them. You can uh, bring in a neck swap once you make your Anguish and get your Occult. You can swap out your Offhand if you feel like you don't need the defense and would rather bring in something like a uh, Mage's Book or an Unholy Book or something like that. And you can really play with this as you see fit. Now, I farm Zora myself with a Ring of Suffering. It's such an amazing item. It's going to help you a lot in your Zora grind instead of having to worry about your rings of recoil all the time you just throw that on and kind of forget about it as long as you have the effect enabled now it wasn't that far off since i already crafted my fury and the ring of suffering actually has a lower crafting requirement it just took a couple of hours at demonic gorillas in addition to those upgrades, one huge thing that'll improve your Zora experience is the ability to make anti-venoms at 87 herb lore or 83 with a botanical pie boost. And those are gonna be so nice to bring with you to help keep yourself from dealing with that constant venoming and re-venoming over and over and over throughout the fight. You're also going to get your blowpipe hopefully sooner rather than later to swap out for the crossbow and also a magic fang to attach to your trident to give yourself some absolutely dope DPS. If you're lucky enough to get a Serpentine Visage drop, you can swap that in for the Helm of Natas Knot. That'll keep you from getting venomed as long as you have scales in it. However, I would still continue using anti-venoms even after receiving one because I use Void to farm Zolra at this point. I just vastly prefer the Void Mage into Void Range switch. And as an Iron Man, it's very easy to obtain. It's just a matter of time as opposed to waiting for an RNG drop. So using Elite Mage into Range is my preferred method of killing Zolra with a six-way switch that I do to this day. I have a Blowpipe, I have a Magic Fang, and I have two Serpentine Visages as well as a Mutagen, and I'm currently still just working on that pet grind as well as coming back to Zora over and over and over again for those scales to continue fueling my Blowpipe as it just eats through them. When it comes to farming Zolra, I'm going to recommend proficiency over efficiency. There are so many things you could do to improve your number of kills per trip, to improve the value of every inventory slot, to make sure you're getting the maximum number of Zolra kills at the least cost per hour. But there are so many things to focus on that you're going to overwhelm yourself. Instead, just figure out what works for you, figure out what on earth is getting you these kills, and just keep doing it over and over and over again until eventually you hit those huge milestones that'll speed it up. 
Use the food that's easy to obtain. Use a method to get here that doesn't drive you insane. Just do whatever you can to make it easier on yourself because the farming aspect of this might drive you insane if it takes you a few hundred kills to get what you want. But here's hoping that you get a blowpipe on your first KC to speed up your silver grind forever and hey, Good luck on the pet as well. I'm hoping that this guide was extremely useful to an Iron Man who's trying out their very first Zulra kill or who's just getting into the grind now. And if it was helpful to you, please let me know. I want to know what I can improve on because I'm extremely new at making guides, but I really love Iron Man and so I'd love to make a lot more of these.